Shaw. You're watching the morning news on Global Halifax. Welcome back to Tuesday edition of the morning news. Well, we all know the power of music, and our next guest is trying to use that power to investigate whether musical improvisation can help people with dementia. Dartmouth Sarah Faber is a music therapist currently studying the effects of music on people with dementia at Anglia Ruskin University over in England. The researcher recently received a hundred thousand pounds from a music therapy charity to lead this three-year project. So it's a big deal. Tonight she's holding a big talk to discuss her research to date. And it's being hosted by the Zonta Club of Halifax here in the city. So joining us with more, please welcome to the red table, Sarah Faber. Sarah, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Fine, thanks. Nice Excellent. Yeah. We wanted to get you on the show to talk today about this issue because January is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, which is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about uh, what you're doing over in England. Well, I'm looking at dyadic improvisation. So two people. We are a dyad right now. Okay. A and dyad. A dyad, yeah. There you go. Science term. Learn something every day. <laughs> Exactly. So I'm interested in pairs of people and dyads improvising together. So I give you an instrument, I have an instrument, we play together and, and create something. Um, while that's happening, I put EEG scanners on people, so that's the buttons on the head, and then look at the brain activity and take a look at what's happening in the brain during the music. Mm -hmm. And so it involves things like listening to the music and seeing if we can divide the music up into small pieces. So is this piece of music more or less interactive or more or less fiddly and challenging than that piece of music, and then is there a difference in the brain data depending on age, on gender, on musical training, and, and even on, on bits of neurodegeneration. So if you have Alzheimer's, is your network during the creation of music going to be different than someone who is perfectly healthy? Okay. Once you collect all, all this data, what will it kind of tell you about people living with Alzheimer's or dementia? What's the end goal here? Uh, the end goal is to just kind of see what's going on in the brain during this during this uh, behavior because when I was working as a music therapist I really noticed that people were having these connections to music when they weren't still having the same kind of engaging the same way with things like language conversation other hobbies music kind of seems to hold on a little bit longer mm -hmm. and so what we're planning on seeing based on literature and a lot of other reading is that your brain, kind of the resting state of the brain, will look a little bit different when you have dementia. The connections will be fewer and the voltage, because your brain is your brain's electric. Yeah. The electricity will be a little bit lower. Um, but I'm kind of hoping to see more of a normalization during the music. So it to be different, but less different than a control condition. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that you're studying this over in England. What brought you to England? And like, tell me about your education up to this point to bring you to this big uh, project. Certainly. Well, way back in the day, once upon a time, okay. uh, I studied... A long time ago in the galaxy far, far, far away. Far away. In Ontario, actually. In no, Ontario, was... far, far away. Uh, I studied music therapy after graduating from Cole Harbor High. Um, music therapy brought me back to Halifax. I worked as a private practitioner and with the Shanex group as, a, as an on-staff music therapist for a few years. And then was really keen to research the brain because I was working with these client populations and seeing them being so musical. And I really wanted to know why. And you can't really do that without going back to university. So I was looking at music psychology programs, not necessarily music therapy, because I really needed to learn how to do brain science, which sounds less intelligent now that I've said it out loud. <laughs> uh, so I went to Finland, did a master's degree there, and then oh my goodness. England seemed to be kind of an acceptable midway point, kind of on the way back. Wow. Yeah, and there's not too many places where you can do this type of research. Hopefully oh. there will be many more someday. Yeah. But not right now. So you're giving a talk tonight on basically uh, a lecture on the research at this point. You haven't actually started the research yet. It's still in the phase of getting going because of the prep work. Mm -hmm. But this is open to the public tonight as well, right? It is, yes. It's uh, it's free. It's at 6 o'clock at the Staticona at the ward room. And info at zontahalifax.org if you want to sign up because everyone needs to have their name on a list for the base. Yeah. And that'll be 6 to 8. If you're out there watching this morning, let's say, and you have a, a parent or a mother or father or relative who is uh, living with dementia or Alzheimer's, and they wanted to go, what are they going to get from tonight's talk and moving forward? Certainly. Well, they'll get a review of dementia, kind of what is dementia, um, what is Alzheimer's, what are challenges and, and treatment goals for this population, what music can do and what music therapy commonly does. Um, and then they're going to get a bit of a background on the neurosciences, what, what it means when we're imaging the living brain, mm -hmm. um, what you can and cannot do with a neuroscience study, a little bit about my research in particular, and then kind of 
a bit of a conversation on what the lay of the land is for music psychology research right now with this population. Like this is what we're able to see and this is what people are doing now. Um, this is what we're hoping to do for the future. Mm -hmm. And any questions, and hopefully there'll be some good discussion. Well, the future is key because as we've talked about on our show before, there's a wave coming, especially in this province of people who are gonna have dementia and Alzheimer's and the more secrets we can unlock to it to kind of figure it out, the better, right? Absolutely, and music is so, is so nice and so, it's so fun, yeah. really, especially in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's going to be able to engage in some way or another. Excellent stuff. Well, we appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck with the talk tonight. Thank you. And best of luck with your research. We'll be watching. Thanks very much. So nice to see you. Starting with Sarah Faber right there. The public talk is tonight. The effects of music on dementia patients. And it's at the wardroom, CFE Halifax, Datacona. The event is free. 6 p.m. for a little meet and drink before it all gets going. We will take a break on the morning news. Back with more for this. Stay with us.